He is a midfielder for Philadelphia Union. Two goals in 66 appearances for the U.S. men's national team. A member of the 2014 World Cup team. Also the 2022 MLS Works Humanitarian of the Year and 2022 MLS Eastern Conference Champs. Alejandro Bedoya is my guest. Alejandro, great to have you on the show. How are you? Jamie, I'm good. I'm good. Good to. Uh, thanks for having me on. And good, great to see you become a soccer fan these days. <laughs> You know it. You know it. I'm all about it. And it's great to have you on the show. I really appreciate it. So pretty basic for the U.S. Win and you're in. Anything less than that and you're done. What has impressed you the most about the U.S. thus far? And then what is your biggest concern for Team USA as it relates to today's matchup with Iran? Yeah, I've had to give the national team a lot of credit. You know, I think they've shown really well this tournament. Uh, they had a great opening first half against Wales. Unfortunately, not to come out with the win there. And then against England, you know, obviously everybody, that was the biggest game so far. And uh, they showed really, really well. Dominating part to play, having the better chances. Uh, I've seen some great play from Tyler Adams, you know, showing off uh, he's deserving to be captain. Christian Pulisic, Eunice Musa has impressed me. And, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to see in this game, let's see what changes are. You said 90 minutes before kick off. I haven't seen who the starting lineup is, but uh, I hope to see some changes, you know, to see some play from Gio Reyna and, and my former teammate, Brennan Aronson, who, uh, you know, has a lot of promise. Alejandro Bedoya joining us. All right, so a lot in that answer. Speaking of Reyna, how do you think that he has been used thus far and then how critical might he be today? Yeah, well, he hasn't really been used. You know, I don't think he's had the opportunity to to show off what he's a uh, what he's capable of. And, and I'd say the same goes for Brendan Aronson, my former team. I think these are two guys that can have a good impact on this team, who have shown their quality throughout and who have been performing really well for the club team. So I'm interested to see how they're used today because I think they could be the main the difference makers for our our team, specifically Gio Reyna. You know, I wonder. You mentioned that that. The U.S. did have some chances against England, to be sure. That said, chances have been kind of tough to come by for the Americans thus far. How aggressive do you expect Coach Greg Berhalter to be today? Any idea? I would love for him to be more aggressive. You know, I think, to be fair, I think Iran might approach this game a little bit more defensively, so it's going to be tough to break them down. But we need that's why we need these types of guys like Gio Reyna and Brendan Harrison to put pressure on them to, you know, try to create something out of nothing. Because unfortunately, you know, we struggle with that number nine position, a striker who we can count on to score goals. So we're going to need them from our midfielders. Uh, and these are the guys that can create the difference. So I hope we can, uh, you know, create as many chances as we had against England. And, and we just got to be able to convert those chances, you know. You know, we can't go be too wasteful. You know, what about that? Were you encouraged by the team's play, the scoreless draw against England? I was encouraged because I liked what I saw. You know, they were on the front foot. They weren't backing down. Uh, and like I said, they were able to uh, create some quality chances that I think on another day, you know, I, I remember in the first half, Weston McKinney, he skied one, which I think he, he normally would do better on that. Uh, and, and they created the better chances against a, a really, really good Engl English side. So I was definitely encouraged from what I saw. And I, like I said, the first half against Wales was also some some of the best soccer I've seen in play, actually, in, in the, couple, the last couple of years. So. I'm encouraged, but like I said, you have to put the ball in the back of the net, and we've struggled with that. So that's what gets me a little nervous still against Iran today because I expect them to be in a lower block. Uh, so can we have those players like uh, the Geos uh, that can create something out of nothing and, and create a little bit of extra space and, and get that shot off to, to score a goal? Alejandro Bedoya joining us. You mentioned also Tyler Adams. I'm curious, what do you remember about the first time you played against him, and then how do you think he's handled the responsibility of being team captain? Yeah, I actually tweeted something recently uh, about my first encounter with him when I first came back to the league uh, after that English game. Yeah, um, I remember I seeing this young kid and we're going at it, you know, kind of seeing each other a lot in, in the midfield. And we actually came victorious that game. But I did notice that he was closing me down like so hard and getting stuck in and in my face. And I'm like, who is this young kid, you know, getting in my face? And, you know, it's good to, to, to have some... Uh, Good, friendly, uh, you know, talk between us and, and some banter. But I, the first thing I remember right after the game finished, uh, I went over to him. I was like, hey, man, I got a lot of respect for you. You don't back down. And, and I like what I saw from you. You know, you hungry. Uh, and I knew that I, I was seeing a guy that had a lot of potential. And, and he's lived up to it so far and has shown in this tournament. He's a key, key player for us. Very deserving of the captaincy. And, you know, he sets a tone. You see him closing down the guys on the other side, the English side. I mean, the biggest uh, compliment I can say to him is the English, the, the English team uh, put in Jordan Henderson into that match instead of putting like a more attacking player just to, you know, get a foothold on the midfield. 
So that, that's incredible, I think. And he's been so far the, our best player in the tournament. Alejandro Bedoya joining us. Now, you play for the national team, so you know, you know, you know all about this, and you know that soccer and politics can intersect. And they have once again. Yesterday, Greg Berhalter and Tower Adams were at the center of a pretty contentious press conference that didn't have really that much to do with soccer itself. Do you think the tensions off of the pitch are going to impact what happens on it today? Yeah, look, sports, we, it doesn't live in a vacuum, right? Especially soccer being such a global sport. And we knew, everybody knew coming in where, you know, the ho- where it's being hosted, that there was a lot of issues at stake, right? And uh, there's a lot of distractions. This is just another perhaps distraction outside the field. But I know that, you know, these guys, once that whistle blows, everything goes out the window. They're staying focused. They're only focus is to do their best to represent themselves well, to, you know, represent their families, their friends, and uh, of course, put on a show for their country and they're going to do everything both sides to do everything they can to win this game. So they'll be putting everything aside and the focus is on, on the game plan that they've set forth for the match. And uh, hopefully the USA will come out victorious. I mean, can you speak to like what they must be feeling like right now? This is a game, a match that they've worked their entire lives for. I mean, this is as big as it gets. At the same time, it's a really young team, but it's a young team with some players that are playing some really, really, really big matches elsewhere. What about the pressure? How do you compartmentalize that? And generally speaking, what do you think these guys are feeling right now, 90 minutes out, under 90 minutes out? Yeah, look, these, this group of guys are the second youngest team in the World Cup. They grew up in the age of social media, right? So I think they, they, they have a pretty good grasp of how to deal with pressure and noise and, and blocking all that stuff out, right? Um, however, I know, you know, being a player, you go to bed the night before and in your mind, you're kind of playing certain scenarios out in your mind, seeing how, you know, visualizing certain plays. And, and I know they have in the back of their mind that 2010 World Cup, you know, uh, Algeria, right? When Landon Donovan scored that, the game winner and, and just the emotions behind that. And, and they're all looking to see if they could be that hero, right? To score that game winning goal that helps propel the USA to the next round. And they're all thinking about that. And, and they got a game plan. Like I said, it's one thing to have X's and O's, but once that whistle blows, you know, you zone out and, and you're focused on the match. And, and it's all about the willingness to win. You know, at this point, it's it's who has the more will to to, to get the result. And I hope that uh, the USA comes out, you know, firing on all cylinders. All right. So really quickly, before I ask you for a prediction, what about one thought about goalkeeper Matt Turner? He's allowed just that one goal in the two matches. And that came on that penalty kick by Wales. How impressed have you been with what you've seen from him? I've been very impressed by him and his composure. I mean, there was a couple of times in the England game, actually, when he, he was very calm on the ball and made me a little nervous, you know, the way he was passing out of the back. But he, he's great. I mean, his story is wonderful. I mean, credit to him. You know, another guy like myself, born in North Jersey, so representing. <laughs> but uh, he, he he's, his story is fantastic, the way he started to get into soccer and, and how far he's come in such a short time. And, and he's an incredible shot stopper. Uh, and I think he just gives uh, our defense and our team in general a, a lot of calm uh, with this play so he's been crucial you know coming up with uh, big saves hey before you go let me ask you this you were named the 2022 mls works humanitarian of the year it's an award given to the player who exemplifies both skill on the field and service within the community you are well known for your activism especially in trying to eradicate gun violence it's a really really great award what does receiving that award mean to you yeah, I was very humbled, perhaps, you know, not as deserving as others, but, you know, I think it's the, I think it's uh, having the respect of your peers. I think that's what I was fascinated by. And, and I'm very blessed to be able to have that award. You know, like I said, I think soccer in general, sports, you know, but soccer in general being the global game, as we've seen uh, at Qatar, has the ability to unite people, to bring people together. And, you know, when you want to create some positive social change, I think it helps. And, you know, we just want the best for our communities. And I think through soccer and, and, and leveraging my platform, I think it's important to to, to have a, a say to, to and try to, you know, have progress throughout our communities and society and, you know, wherever we can. Good for you. And congratulations on that. So really quickly, Alejandro, what are you looking for early in the match? And how about a prediction? What do you think is going to happen? I'm looking forward to USA coming out full of energy, getting that, you know, stuck in first tackle and playing on the front foot, playing in their half and keeping it in there, keep the pressure on. And, uh, but I think they're going to be more defensively Iran. So Iran, excuse me, but um, so, but I'm looking forward to, you know, like I said, uh, a one zero result is what I I'm feeling right now. Like we've been, you know, it's tough to score goals and uh, they haven't been able to demonstrate that they can. 
Uh, so one zero will do, and and that's a fight. That will suffice to get on to the next round. One zero certainly would do. Anything less than that, and they're going home. He is a midfielder for Philadelphia Union, a member of the 2014 World Cup team. He has been here before. Alejandro Bedoya, my guest. Alejandro, really appreciate you. Great to have you on the show. Thanks for your thoughts, and we'll see what happens. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, and let's go USA.